analysts or data analysts out there that are very familiar with Excel, but not so much on the SQL part. And so today I'm going to go over, you know, how do you translate Excel sheets into SQL languages and with some of the actual data sets that you will link down below so you can play with the data set a little bit and understand how it will actually look like in real life. Um, so we're going to get started. So here we have, uh, you know, so if you're running uh, Amazon as a platform, then you might have all these data like customers table, orders table, and products table. And if we specifically want to look at orders table, you might want to look at like all the columns available. But before you do that, you should always make sure you filter down to one date because, you know, in Excel, you might only have a few hundred thousand rows, but in a database, you have millions of rows that you should always filter down to a specific day if you just want to try to see, you know, what are the columns or rows. So select star uh, will get you all the columns that you need from the orders table. And the where key, which works like a row filter, you know, when you go into Excel and you try to uh, hit the filter button and you, you try to filter down to only like a specific date. That's what this where clause is doing is I filtered down to 1996 and to July 4th. So what does it look like in an Excel sheet? So it's pretty much, you know, going row by row. So this is the, um, the data sets that I linked down below to uh, show you guys how the data looks like. But just to show you, you know, 10 rows of data, that's what the data looks like. You have order ID, customer ID, employee ID, and order ID, and shipper ID. So essentially the where clause here is pretty much going through every single row. So okay, so we look at first row. Uh, it's July 4th of 1996. That's not what we wanted. So we eliminate this row and that's not going to show in your data. And then you check the second row, which was July 5th of 1996, but still not the date that we wanted, which is July uh, 8th. So then we eliminate this row as well. So this is not going to show up in our data. And then when you go down to the fourth row, which gives you a July 8th uh, date, and that's the date that you want, so we're going to keep that row. And then the next row is also July 8th, so it's perfect that we're going to keep that row as well. But essentially, with the word clause is like scanning through every single row and eliminate. So there are many different ways of how you can filter your date specifically, especially if the data type is date, that uh, you can actually do a lot of things with it, not just like equal to a specific date. You can do ranges, you can do greater than a specific date and less than and like between the two dates. So that's how, like just to give you guys a visualization of how it looks like. Uh, first one we're going to look at is equals to a specific date, like the previous example I gave. Um, so it's essentially just like filter down to everything to this state. Nothing else will be included. So if your data is from, let's say, July 4th to July 18th, and you want to say, I want everything greater than or equal to uh, July 4th of 1996, then it's including July 4th and, in, and add every single day after that. So you're essentially, you're including the first day you start with, which is inclusive, uh, and then great, and then pick, take all the dates uh, that are greater than a specific date. Uh, typically, you probably won't do that so much uh, unless you, uh, and unless you know like some feature that you launched is after a specific date and you want to add all the data after a specific date and which hopefully is more like recent data maybe like last three months or last two months so that you're not collecting like three years of data and then how does it look for greater than just just simply greater than July 4th then you're essentially not include so you're not including the July 4th but like including July 5th and above. So just to keep in mind that this equal sign actually makes a huge difference that if it's greater than or equal to, it's inclusive of the data you've put in, but it's only greater than, it's not including the data you put in. And so, okay, so now let's look at less than or equal to July 18th. Same thing that uh, less than or equal to will include July 18th, and anything before that. 
uh, when you do use the state filter, uh, it's very tricky because unless you know like exactly how much data you have be like before the state, otherwise you're gonna probably run into a lot of memory issues because it's essentially saying, let's say you want the, the date to be three months before and then you're talking about like, you know, three years of data, then you're pretty much including two years and nine months of data. Um, so be, be very careful when you use this filter. Um, but then we also have uh, between and. So you can put between a date and another date and you always should start with a smaller date and then have a bigger date. So between A and B date, meaning you're including both ends. So you're including both July 4th and July 18th. So the where clause actually can filter more than just a, the date. It can filter down to numerical data, string data, and also null. Null is a different data type in uh, SQL language. So it's null, then it's like completely blank, blank. It's not zero or it's not um, none. Uh, so just to keep that in mind. But uh, here we can, you know, for the numerical data, you can say it's equals to a number. So then you'll filter down to only that specific number, or you can do greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, which will include, let's say you're greater than or equal to one, and it will include one, uh, less than or equal to one, and you will always include one and below. So, uh, and then the same thing with between, that you're including the first number you put in, the second number you put in, so it would be between one and five, it will be one, two, three, four, or five. Uh, greater than is not including the number you put in. If you put greater than one, it's going to be starting with uh, two if it's an integer and less than. And then you can also use in, uh, which is a function in SQL where you say you can have multiple of individual numbers. So it will include one, five, and seven. It's not necessarily a continuous number. It will just only specifically take out one, five, and seven as integers. Or you can do not in as a function that you're not going to include uh, one, five, and seven as integers. But if it's uh, continuous data, uh, that will still work. But unless it's, you know, the, the data actually is one, uh, it's five and seven, then it will like, not include those. And then you might also have strings where you, you say, okay, if this data is equal to A, and you need to, for strings, you always have to put quotation marks. And for this, um, for equals A, quotation mark, then you'll only filter down to rows that are specific has A in it. And then this uh, less than, e greater than sign means not equal to in SQL language. So then you're essentially filter down to every single row that's not equal to A. The like clause with a, a quotation mark with percentage sign is meaning you're filtering out to the string, but then you're not specifically looking for A. Uh, you you add a percentage sign before and after to say, I want to look for any string or any uh, letters that has a letter A or big letter A in between. So let's say you have cat as your uh, data, then if it's capitalized, then it will have cat in your data because it has a, a letter before and a letter after A. And then you can also just have one percentage sign in the back. What does that do? So that actually only filters out strings that start with a big letter A and has anything, it can have anything after that. If you know specifically what letter you're looking for, you should always, uh, and you know that the, you know, the entire string has just that letter, then you should always use an equal sign because a like clause is actually uh, taking a lot more resources because it has to look for every single uh, string and then try to see, oh, does it have a le uh, letter if it started with a letter, big letter A, or it has the letter before that or anything. So keep that in mind. And then also you can have just a percentage sign before A. What does that do? So it will say, I want any string that has any letter before the big letter A. And then uh, same thing, you can also have in and not in. So it will say, I want in has a letter A and letter B. Uh, which only specifically uh, that's A and B. Practical example would be if you want cat and dog, then you'll actually spell out cat and dog and it'd be like in cat and dog or not in. 
So that's how you will get both data in the, your uh, filter. Then you can also have null, which is completely blank. And so you can say, I want all the data that's null. Uh, so you would typically do that when you try to see if there's any problem with your data and see if, like why there's so many nulls or like where these nulls coming from. And then you can also do is not null to make sure that you clear out like so you do is not null typically to clean your data and make sure that your data doesn't contain like a lot of nulls and you know remove all the data quality problems that you your data has so the where clause can actually filter down to multiple conditions and you essentially do exactly the same thing Excel when you click down the filter and filter down to a specific day and maybe a different specific shipper ID. And when you click on both, you know, when you filter down to both columns and you're essentially writing a word clause with the end condition that you want both A to be true and B to be true. So let's look at this example of, you know, this one. Let's say I'm looking at this orders table and I want to look at July 8th and also shipper ID equals two. So what essentially what is happening? So essentially what's happening is you're scanning through every single row and you want to look for the combination that matches with both conditions. So the first row is July 4th, which should probably be 3. It doesn't match with either conditions, so we're going to definitely eliminate that. Okay? And now when you go to the second row, you see, oh, so it has July 5th. But that's ID equals one. So it still doesn't meet with any of the two conditions. So we're definitely going to eliminate that as well. And looking at the row number four, uh, that we have July 8th and shipper ID equals two. Okay, so it meets both conditions. That's great. So we're going to keep that. Row number five, it has July 8th, but shipper ID equals one. So it meets with one condition, which the order date is correct. But the shipper ID is not, you know, not two. So then we're still not going to include row number five. And so uh, now we're going to go over the where clause with the or condition. So or condition meaning you it doesn't have to be both true. Either one of them has to be true. And so uh, looking at this exact same condition but just change the and to an or, it actually makes a huge difference. So now we can just look at the data and then say, okay, if order date is July 8th, great, we're going to take it. It doesn't matter what a shipper ID is, we're just going to take everything that has order date equals July 8th. Or shipper ID equals 2. So that means we don't care about order date either. We just, any rows that has shipper ID equals 2, then we're going to take it as well. So now we're, if with the or condition, we're going to have a lot more data uh, that we're selecting from. So now look at the first one, the July 4th with shipper ID equals three. So it doesn't match with either condition. So we're going to eliminate that still anyway. And the second one is July 5th with shipper ID equals one. Um, still does not match with either condition. So we're just going to eliminate that anyway. Um, and then the third one, uh, the fourth row, it, ha it matches with both, which we'll still, we can take it. But for the, the, the biggest difference is that for fifth row, it only matches with July 8th with a shipper ID equals 1, which doesn't match with shipper ID equals 2, but we don't care anyway because it matches with at least, you know, one of them. So then we're going to take July 8th and that we're still going to keep that data. And when you go to the row number 6, it's July 9th, but it has a shipper ID equals 2. So we're going to take it anyway because it has shipper ID equals 2. We don't even care about if the order date is July 8th or not. So in Excel, like what do you do when you just want, let's say with this same table, but like, you just want to order ID and custom ID? What people typically do would be, you know, they create another sheet and then copy those two columns over, right? Um, but how would you do that in SQL? So you will do that by, let's say, so you want, you know, or ID and custom ID. So you'll do that by select, instead of selecting star, so star, again, is selecting every single column you have. Uh, but if you just want, you know, order ID and custom ID, that's how you do it, is that you will just say, I want to select order ID, comma, custom ID, and from this table. And still keep in mind, you always want a day filter because you don't want to, you know, get a massive data set. Um, from your database if you you know if you're just trying to check uh, for you know these two columns and how they look like in real life 
So that's how you do it to put pick specific columns. And to summarize all we covered, so first thing first, always, always have a date filter. I cannot mention how important it is because people, you know, usually uh, people just starting, you know, data career, they'll like go into databases, select star from a table and has no filter. And then they'll end up just crashing a server because like select star is everything you have in the table and then from like maybe two, three years of data or however many years of data you have, it's going to just crash a server. Uh, and then... And then we also talked about, you know, different types of data, like numerical, string, or null, uh, you know, how we can use a word condition to filter it differently with an equal sign or not equal, uh, which is a less than or greater than sign, or greater than a, greater than or equal to a specific, uh, can be an a integer or numerical data or a date. And you can also use a between A and B, that can also be applied to date or numerical data. And then you can, of course, you you always, you know, it's very common to use a like clause, uh, which will give you uh, any string that has, like maybe contain a letter A in it, and then also the null data. The last thing we cover is a where clause with and or or condition. And the major difference between and or or is that and is meaning you have to match with both conditions uh, or like however many conditions you have, you can have more than two. And then the or uh, can also have multiple, just means that you don't have to match with all the conditions as long as one of the conditions are met.